I was going to do an introduction video, but we've just had a had a run straight away. So I'm going to wind down and have a look and see what's there. Yep, we're in. Ooh, feels okay. That was in a small sardine that was literally out two minutes. Just setting all the other rods up. And this one tore off. Just try and keep it away from that anchor rope. There we go. A lovely Menteith bike. It's a nice one to start the day with. Hooked perfect. That one wasn't coming out. Lovely. Literally two minutes. Gorgeous. Fin perfect. Just what these renowned uh, Menteith Pike are renowned for. Go then, there we go. Boat fishing with dead baits can be quite daunting, especially if it's something that you're not familiar with or something that you've not done before. Um, today I'm just going to try and run through all the boat fishing basics with you with regards to rigs, how to set up your rod, how to anchor correctly, how to catch more fish, more importantly. Um, make sure everything's done safely to land more fish for you. Hey, well, we've had a couple of, couple of fish already this morning. Um, this went a bit slow the last 10 minutes. So I thought I'd just try and do a little video on the setup that I'm going to be using today. First up, it's a 10 foot, 3 pound test curve Fox Predator Elite boat rod. Perfect for this kind of this work that we're doing today. Uh, I've coupled that up with a 7000 EOS reel. Again, perfect for this kind of job, it's well balanced. I've loaded that with 60 pound braided mainline. 60 pound braid might sound a lot for pike fishing, but trust me, it's better to be on the heavier side than the lighter side. You don't want to be broke off by these fish. Uh, okay, so next up, we're currently anchored in 12 foot of water. So I've got the float stop which is just on just on the line, set at 13 foot, just a foot over depth. Connecting to that, we've got a bead that runs up the main line that stops against the stop knot. And there's my bead on the main line on a, a 35 gram sliding float connected then again got a 25 gram weight running sliding on the line down to a swivel, a clip and then my trace. My trace is made up of 40 pound 49 strand wire. On the business end I've got two size 4 armour point hooks, perfect for the job. Um, you might think the gap on them is quite small which is about 3 inch, 3 and a half inch, but the baits that I'm using are going to be quite small today simply because of the fact that I want to hit runs straight away. I don't want to deep hook, deep hook any fish. As soon as I get indication, I'm winding out the fish and hitting them. So that's my setup. I'm going to get a bait on there and get it out. So I spoke about the rig that I'm using, and I'm going to cast a bait out and show you what happens from there. Cast out, 
and it hit the bottom. Count it down. Keep them, up, <coughs> keep them quite a tight line on it. Now that I'll do is I'll just give off a couple, a couple of feet of line. Put it in the rod rest and what will happen is <coughs> if I don't see the float where the pike's moving off with the bait, it'll let me know by the auto. So we've just moved into a new spot, got the baits out, been out about five minutes. I'm sitting casting lures when I got a run. So wound down, hit into it, and it does feel a bit better. It's not as jagged, it's just staying deep. It's giving these new rods a workout anyway. Well, it's not as big as I thought. Just dragging it in. It's certainly a double. It's hooked just the way I like it. I'm not going to that. Nice. As I was saying earlier about the quick strike. The hooks are just in the corner of the mouth. Calm down. A lovely Menti's pike. <laughs> Fighting all the way to the end. Give it a little rest. That's the way to do it. So I'm just going to make a, a simple stop knot. What we've got is 20 pound fly back in. That's the stuff that I use. I like to use. It's nice and bright. I can see it. Um, so put it alongside the braid. Your braided main line. Double it up. Run it through. One, two, three, four times. Pull it tight. Trim off, trim off your tags, and then you can adjust that to whatever depth you want to fish. Well, we've just moved spot. We're now currently in 14 foot of water, so the stop knot needs to come up a few feet, as you can see. Count it down, mm. the float's cocked. All I'm going to do then is bring the stop knot up a, couple, up a couple of feet to compensate. Have a look at the depth. That's too much. Take it back a foot. Drop it back down. And there that's it, sitting perfect. So when I get a run, the float will shoot across this, to the surface. So a big thing with boat fishing is you need to be anchored up correctly. Uh, quickest and easiest way to do it is to have two anchors, one out the bow of the boat, one out the back of the boat. So you get in a, a spot that you want to fish, the first thing you need to do is drop the front anchor, put the engine in reverse, reverse back as much as you to all the ropes out usually I like to get out about three times the amount of depth of water that I'm in so if I'm in 10 foot of water I put out 30 foot of rope um, the next thing I'll keep the rope tight let the wind move the boat round so that the wind's blown into the face in my face if you like I'll then drop the back anchor pay out a couple of foot of uh, rope, tie it off, and then I'll go back to the, the bow anchor, pull pull the line, uh, the rope in until it goes tight, then tie it off. That way, doesn't matter how windy it is, the boat won't move.
Some big fish. That's what we came for. A big man teeth bike. That's a net, a net job. Oh. I think that one had other, other ideas. In you come. That's better. That's a 20. <laughs> That's what we came for. Proper menti spike. I think I'll weigh that one up. I would say it was about 16, 17 pounds. Bingo. 21 pounds. There's one short, fat fish. Twenty-one pound of men menteef pike. Took it on a tiny four-inch sardine. Oh, that one wasn't hanging about. <laughs> well, that was a pretty crazy five minutes there. Um, unfortunately, the, unfortunately, the batteries on the mic packed in, so we had to cut filming short. But long story short, I got her on, played it, brought it in. Twenty-one pound. Just as I was unhooking it, I clipped a bait back on, stuck it back out, stuck the rod back in the rod rest, took some photos of the fish, put it back, and the rod went off again. I let Steve hit it, and it was £22 <laughs> on the button. Crazy. That's that's what happens with this place. I, I, I said to him as well, I said, this, this, this place usually comes on about 2 o'clock. I think it was like 10 past 2 we got that run. So, just goes to show you. They're there. Well, the action's come thick and fast recently. The last two runs have resu resulted in two 20 pounders, one for me and one for Steve, so here's hoping this is another one. Just my luck, it's a jack. <laughs> What we have noticed recently is, I, I said to Steve later on, that this place is notorious for fishing better later on as the day progresses. And sure enough, we've managed a few bigger fish later on. This one's doing some waddling about. It's not a 20, but it's another pike. You might have noticed that I tend not to, to net a lot of the fish. That's simply because if I was, look, for example, if I was to net that fish just now with two flying hooks, it would make a hell of a mess of the fish, and I don't want that. But if you feel more comfortable doing them, then net them. But fish that size, you can perfectly just pick them up with your hand. Guess the places that I've been. You never guess the places that I've been. So here we are, day two on Lake Amentif. Yesterday was crazy, absolutely hectic. Every spot that we went to, we caught fish. 
Um, day two, same sort of technique, uh, tactics as yesterday. We're just going to move about and try and try and find some pike. A big water like this is 700 acres. Uh, it might seem daunting to most of you, um, but I find the easiest way to do it is just break it down into smaller sections. I tend to try and tackle water under 30 foot simply because um, if you think of it this way, the water column itself, you've got 30 foot, there's more chance of a pike seeing your bait on the bottom as compared to fishing over 50 foot. There might not, might, might not be as many, many pike in that area. The area that we're in just now, 14, 16 foot, this, this whole area, we've got an area of deep, deeper water to the front of the boat, uh, shallower over that side, deeper again over there. This, this, this whole area just screams pike, there's, there's a bit of weed here and there. Uh, so let's give it a go and see what happens. Uh, so we're, we're out dead baiting today. Um, as you can see, we're using four rods. We've got our baits well spread out. Um, on here, we're limited to the use of sea baits only. That's simply because the fishery's not wanting us to use freshwater baits in the fear of contamination or spread of disease anything like that. So I'm going to run through some of the baits that I like to use on here. First up, my favourite, sardine. Just a perfect size, perfect bait, perfect profile. As soon as the pike, pike picks them up, it's in its mouth. Nice and soft so the trebles come out really easy. Um, I prefer to fish these whole. And I'll always mount them up, tail up. So top treble, right in the tail root. Second treble, along the flank of the bait in the middle so that when a pike, pike comes along picks it up the bottom it's coming in picking it up it's got at least one treble right in its mouth you can hit, hit them straight away mackerel half mackerel pretty much the exact same mackerel I've caught pike oof, gone on I don't know since the 60s or whatever it was when dead bait started first getting used for pike mackerel has been one of the favourites and still is to this day Uh, thirdly, blueies. Blueies are a bait that I love. Just last week I had a, a 34 pounder on one and a 23 on the same day, <laughs> so they've been quite kind to me recently. Uh, they're quite a new bait on the market, maybe about the last sort of 10 years, but they've been, de been deadly. They're sort, sort of a, a hybrid between a sardine and, and a mackerel, plenty of juices. On the blueies, I still have to tend to favour the head section simply because you cut them in half. All the goodness is up this end. The way that I would hook a head section bait, top treble, in the head, the nose of the bait, pretty solid there. Same again, in the middle of the bait. Pike comes along, perfect, same again. You notice the baits that I, I use are generally quite small, sort of four, five, four and a half, five inch, simply because when you cast out, it hits the bottom, a pike comes along, takes it. It's just, just the perfect size for a, mouth, a mouthful, just to get it right in. If you use bigger baits, two hook rig, some people have got a tendency to leave runs to try and hook, try and hook the fish. It's not really, not really good practice. You want to be hitting the runs straight away. So let's get, get the bait out and give it a go. So I said earlier about having the right tackle to come out boat fishing, but equally important you've got to have the right tools for the job. Uh, as you can see I've always got a range of forceps, pliers, hook cutters, and all sort of uh, tools that you need to remove hooks from pike. But also I've got, a I've got a large deep net for netting any, any fish. I said earlier that I don't really tend to net fish that I've got hooks showing but certainly the bigger ones I'll, I'll net, especially if, if the, both hooks are in the mouth. Um, another thing you need, a good quality on hooking mark. These boats are really solid. The last thing you want to do is have a big pike thrashing about the bottom of a boat. It's just not really the, the, the done thing, and it's, it's certainly not good for the pike. So just as important it is to catch them and look after them, you want to try and get them back as safely as you can.
I was just saying to Steve, uh, we're due a run. It's getting near that time of day, especially when we had those bigger fish yesterday. This one feels like a good fish. Woohoo! I've been saying that a lot today, but these menti pike. This is a big fish. Uh, that's a good fish. <laughs> Just staying deep, like we usually do. It's coming towards me. That's a nice fish. Not a big fish, but it's a double. Oh, these fish certainly give us a run around today. Oh. They just don't give up. Are going to tail walk for us? No. Woo! There we go. One last run in it. It's important to just let the rod do the work. Well, that fish has never seen a hook before. See the purple sheen on them. Get that one out first. The other one's not even hooked, it's just sitting just at the side of the gills. A chunky double. Lovely. Let's get it back. God, that water's cold. Four degrees, middle of November. See ya. Well, there you have it. Uh, the day's drawn into a close. Uh, it's been a cracking couple of days. Big thanks to Lake Amenti Fishery for allowing us out. Uh, what did I say? This is, this is boat fishing for pike, in a nutshell, pretty much. It just goes to show you that we've had so much action over the last couple of days that if you can get into where, where the fish are and make the most of it, then you can catch two. You can catch some quality fish, just like what we did yesterday. We had two 20-pounders, brilliant. Lots of double-figure fish, lots of runs, lots of action. Uh, and most of all, uh, I hope that you take something away from the, the tips that I've given you and a little insight into the, to my sort of style of fishing. Until next time, take care.